Okay, in desperation to find something new to watch, The Bad Batch. Hello out there, I'm the Oldest Nerd, and uh, today we're talking about The Bad Batch. This is a cartoon series, and uh, it is set in the time period right at the end of the Clone Wars, and uh, as Emperor Palpatine comes into power. Uh, we have, as our main characters, a group of five who are all distinguished by their skills. Um, Hunter is the person who is the leader of this squad that they call Clone Force 99. And he has with him Tech, who is the computer expert, um, Crosshair, who is the marksman, a couple of others. Sneezy and Dopey, I don't know. It's interesting to watch in that the special effects, the ships, things like this, don't look a whole lot different than they do in the movies because, of course, most of that is CG anyway. And uh, the rest of the cartoon has the same problems that CG has in doing human characters, which is they don't look exactly realistic, and I don't think they're intended to here anyway. Uh, uh, they are um, uh, fairly interestingly drawn, but uh, don't have any expectation that they're going to look any more like real people than they do in even the Clone Wars. And the only reason I bring this up is that uh, despite the fact that I find uh, it to be rather flat as far as the essence of the story, the writing, and the plotting of it, I mean, it's, it's still interesting. You still care about the characters. You still um, root for them. But uh, it, it is uh, kind of the same way that you root for Superman or Batman. You don't really think of them as real people. You don't really think of them as real characters. They're just somebody to follow. They remind me a little bit of the A-Team. Uh, obviously, you have the different types there. They're not uh, going into any kind of capers as far as we know. Uh, they are originally um, loyal fighters for the Republic. And as evidenced by Tarkin, who at that point was an admiral, uh, is uncertain of whether clones need to be used anymore in order to organize the new empire. However, special interests are taken in Clone Force 99 because of the fact that they are aberrant, that they uh, are able to survive, that they are able to win fights, that they're able to do things despite not following direct orders. But of course, you would expect that they get in trouble right at the beginning and uh, then they become this kind of fugitive team who kind of leans along with uh, some of the resistance, the early resistance before they would call them the rebels. And that's where their adventures go. And like I say, there's nine episodes already in. Uh, if you are desperate for something new to watch, that might be something interesting. Uh, I don't know that it has the same lore as Clone Wars does. I don't know that it has the same effect it would if we had live actors doing things like this. And like I said, the whole execution of it, to my way of thinking, is flat, although it is strangely compelling. Uh, entertaining, but don't expect too much out of it. That's my thought on The Bad Batch. Uh, it is on Disney Plus, and it is another addition into the thousand episode Star Wars saga. So uh, I'd like to know what you think about this. Is it even worth watching to you? I would say if you're a real Star Wars fan, if you know a lot of the backstory, you've read all the books, you've uh, studied all the websites, if you know all of the background information that is available in Star Wars to uh, know what this era is, uh, it's an interesting fill-in to uh, otherwise undiscussed areas. It's uh, kind of in the same go-between the movies, so uh, that's uh, how they seem to be doing that these days. So I'd like to know what you think about it. Uh, please let me know in the comments. Meantime, if you've not subscribed, please do so and uh, ring the bell so you know when the next video is coming your way. Uh, hope everybody had a nice Father's Day. Uh, I would show you uh, what I got, but the cat is sitting on it, so uh, we'll have to wait until another time. Until next time then, don't go far.